Number 52, letter A. What is the direction and magnitude of an electric field that supports the weight of a free electron near the surface of Earth? All right. So uh, let's first, here's our little electron. What's the charge of an electron? It's negative. If you said positive, don't worry about it. I couldn't hear you anyway. So we have to figure out what's the external electric field here, right? Now, remember, and this I've discussed this concept in prior problems. I don't remember the numbers, but anytime we draw an electric field, right? Let's say we have a uniform electric field here pointing from left to right. Electric field lines always point, always point from positive objects to, oh, to positive objects. What? No, to negative objects. Sorry. <laughs> yes, they point from positive to positive. Uh, they point from positive to negative, okay? So now here's the thing. What we have to do now is you have an electron here, but it's going to be floating. You know electrons have mass though, right? So technically speaking, if this thing has mass, uh, it's going, and we're on the surface, you know, here's Earth, right? Definitely not to scale by any means. Uh, the electron will fall towards the surface of Earth, okay? But we want it to be floating. So there must be something else pushing it back up, right? Now, I know that if this thing is floating, basically what I just said is that there's a weight component. There is a force pointing down. That's the force due to gravity, okay? And there must be something else going on. There must be an electric, an electrostatic force, okay, pointing up. And these two forces must exactly be balanced so that the electron doesn't move and it floats. Now, the question is, how shall I orient this electric field such that it would make sense uh, so that the electron floats. Pretend I just take this field and superimpose it onto this situation like this. Which way, what type of a force will the electron experience? Well, it definitely won't experience this upward force, right? Here's the positive plate, here's the negative plate. The electron is going to be attracted to the positive plate, repelled from the negative plate, so the force is pointing then to the left. Not pointing up, right? But we need it to be pointing up. So. We have to figure out a different way to orient it. So how shall we do it? Well, I probably am going to want the negative side to be down on the bottom. If I superimpose it now this way, let me make it a little bigger. But if I superimpose it this way, does this picture make sense? Meaning, if, something, if it's something's negative on the bottom, something's positive on the top, will that produce a force on this electron upward? Sure. The positive plate will attract the electron. The negative plate will repel the electron. So we should have this force pointing up. Is that correct? Good. Now, what direction is the field? Electric field's pointing downward, right? That Those are the blue lines. That's the electric field there. Okay. Maybe what I should do also here with these charges, let me, uh, the negative ones, let me, because they might look like ones or something. Let me just put them this way now. Okay. So the electric field is pointing downward, and that's how you're going to think about the direction. Okay, I want you to think about it uh, in that particular fashion. So the electric field is downward. You can also say it's in the negative y direction, whatever, whatever you like. Now, we know the direction. Can we calculate the magnitude? Well, sure. We know, remember, that if this thing is floating, we know that the sum of the forces that are acting on that particular electron better equals zero, right? So what are the forces acting on that? Why is it zero? Because remember, force is equal to mass times acceleration. If it's not moving at all, there's definitely no acceleration, and therefore this whole side just goes to zero. So what are the forces? As we detailed, we have the electric force minus then, because the force due to gravity is pointing downward, minus the force of gravity, that better equals zero. So what we realize is that the electric force better balance the force due to gravity. Great. Now, why don't we go and start substituting some things into this formula, right? Remember, it ha we have to find the magnitude of the electric field, okay? So uh, what we can do is, well, actually, yeah. So instead of actually doing, uh, let's say this, instead of actually doing a substitution here, how can we calculate the electric field, right? by thinking through the formulas on the right-hand side. What do you think? Well, possibly if I use the second formula, right? E is equal to F over Q. 
or the electric field strength is equal to the force applied to a particular charge in that electric field divided by the charge that's placed in that electric field. I can use this formula to help guide me, right? So what I'm going to do, instead of now actually doing some substitutions here, I'm going to just switch gears. I'm going to, uh, this is very important, but I'm now going to introduce a new formula, okay? That the electric field strength, external electric field strength, is going to be equal to the force applied to a particular charge in that electric field divided by the charge that's placed in that electric field, okay? Now, what is the force? Now, remember, this force is like, that's, that should be electric force, right? The electrostatic force. Now, here's the thing. We do, we can calculate, we, we can calculate it if we wanted. But what we realized over here, I just box it in, is that the electric force must equal the force due to gravity, right? So what I can basically do is just take this and substitute it on in for the electric force. In other words, I can just plug in the force due to gravity here over Q. Now, what's the force due to gravity? Well, we're talking about an electron. So anytime you have force due to gravity, I'm talking about weight, mg. So this is the mass of an electron multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, g, divided by then q. And look, lo and behold, now we know everything here, right? We know the mass of the electron. You might have to memorize this, or they might give you a table. When I say they, your professor, okay? So that's the mass of an electron. And by the way, you probably should be doing enough practice where, you know, these numbers are, are memorized. I don't mean just sit there and memorize the value for an electron. I mean, you're doing many problems here where you've done and dealt with mass of an electron that you kind of just remember it from doing a lot of problems, all right? That's actually might be a good, a good indication to see if you're doing enough practice. If you can't seem to remember some of the constants, like the charge of an electron, do you know it? If it didn't come to you like that, then I'd say you're probably, you might not be doing enough practice, okay? Uh, at least that is definitely the case for me. Okay, uh, Okay. so 9.8, that's gravity, and then divided by Q. Now, what's the charge of an electron? Right, It's going to be negative, but on, who cares? Just, just put in the sign. I mean, excuse me, just put in the magnitude. Now, technically here, if we didn't, if we put in the sign, we would have gotten a negative E, which would have indicated that it probably should be downward. Okay, however, however. There's some problems that don't, things might not work out as nicely as you might think. And I think it's much better to look at this pictorially. And then just don't worry about the magnitudes of the signs here. Okay, excuse me. Don't, don't worry about the signs themselves. Just worry about the magnitude. So this is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And now all we have to simply do is just throw it on into the calculator and voila. So it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 9.8 all divided by then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And this is going to be about 5. This is the electric field strength, right? This is 5.58 times 10 to the minus 11. And what is that? That's going to be in newtons per coulomb, okay? So that's the electric field strength there. All right, um, it says letter B, discuss what the small value for this field implies regarding the relative strength of the gravitational and uh, electric forces. So electric forces are a lot stronger. There you go. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you uh, again. Please help us out by subscribing and hit the like button, telling your classmates that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, awesome. We'll see you soon in the next problem, hopefully. Take care.